Well, 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 aren't you the lucky ones this Monday evening? A double dose of entertainment from Dr. Creepin's Vault. That's right, two fantastic stories, straight from the subreddit that I set up so you could share your stories with me and I could read them all for you. First up, we have a cautionary tale about not sticking your head where it isn't wanted. Entitled, I Found a Portal in the Woods. And after that, we have another tale about being careful about what you read on the internet and how you deal with such information, called I Never Should Have Cured My Tinnitus. Well, my dear friends, as ever, I merely ask you to sit back and relax with your favorite drink, because it's time to listen. Dad, you said you'd play catch with me. I yelled as my father walked past me to his office, where he spent most of his days when he wasn't at work. I'm sorry, bud. I gotta get these documents done for tomorrow's big meeting. We'll do it another day, okay? I frowned. That was the same excuse he always gave me, and the same follow-up he always had. We'll do it another day. Yeah, yeah, sure we will, I thought. The longer I stood in front of his door, the more upset I became. I eventually huffed and puffed enough to the point where I stormed out of the house. I left for my go-to place when I was upset. The treehouse. To a twelve-year-old kid, a treehouse was the perfect place just to get away from his problems and, well, be a kid. It was Reese's and my place to go when we were sad, mad or just bored out of our minds. It was our little getaway when things went awry in our lives. We also went there just to hang out. It was our spot. We'd found the treehouse one day while looking through the woods for buried treasure. We didn't find any treasure, but we did stumble upon the treehouse. We climbed up the ladder and viewed the place from inside. Reese called it a dump, but I saw the potential in it. I fixed her up, grabbing fold-up chairs, a rug, and a blanket to cover the only window in the wooden box to create the coolest treehouse ever. We kept our comic books, Yu-Gi-Oh cards, and other miscellaneous knickknacks up there. Now that I got the treehouse out of the way, let me explain to you who Reese is. Reese is my best friend. He moved in next door when I was in the second grade. We went over to their house and introduced ourselves. I went into Reese's room and saw he had a Nintendo 64. We sat down and played Super Smash Brothers all day. And that first visit became a sleepover, which we spent staying up late playing video games till our eyes became sore, and then some. Reese was a good kid. Sure, he'd get into trouble occasionally, like the one time he fed his sister's goldfish to the cat, but he was, overall, a good kid. He'd get into trouble with sneaking out, and he was constantly a wise-ass to teachers, but again, he was a good kid, and most importantly, my best friend. My only friend. That day, Reese was on the last day of his grounding. He was caught sneaking out at night. I was supposed to sneak out as well, but I got cold feet and stayed in bed. Reese went to the treehouse alone, and when he realized I wasn't there, returned home where his parents caught him trying to sneak back in. Reese would always tease me, clucking and calling me a chicken when I did stuff like this. I was sure that once he got loose from the confines of his room, he'd be all up in my ear about it. Well, I entered the woods and was making my way to the treehouse. I was about three quarters of the way there, swinging a stick I'd found a while back, pretending it was Excalibur, when I saw it. It was a black hole the size of a bowling ball, levitating at eye level a few feet away from me. It looked like someone took a picture hole and punched it, leaving a black spot in its place. I approached it curiously. I tried to go around it to get a side view of the thing, but it disappeared. I walked behind where it would have been, and it reappeared. The hole was paper thin and couldn't be seen from the sides. I looked at it intensely, trying to see 
if there's anything inside. I looked down at Excalibur and lifted it upwards. I slowly inserted the stick into the black hole. Suddenly, like a vacuum, the hole absorbed the stick, forcing me to let go. I fell backwards on my rear end, kicking my legs out and skittering back in a feeble attempt to create distance between the black hole and me. I breathed heavily as I stared at the hole in astonishment. Then the stick spat back out and fell at my feet. I was frozen in place for a good minute. I didn't know what to do. And then I had an idea. I ran over to a tree and grabbed an acorn off the ground. I went up to the hole and chucked the acorn in. I waited a minute, then the acorn came out, whizzing past my head. Whoa, I said. And that's when I had another idea. I went home and grabbed the football from my bedroom, just in case my dad decided he wanted to play catch with me. I brought it to the black hole, got into a throwing stance, stretched my arm backwards, winding up the shot, and then threw. Of course, I missed the hole completely. I ran and grabbed the ball, got close to the hole, and threw it underhand. This time, it went in. A minute passed, and then the ball popped right back out and bounced a few times before it rolled up close to me. I smiled and prepared another throw. I got into the stance, stretched my arm backwards, and chucked it as hard as I could. This time the ball went in, no problem. A minute went by, and I just stood in front of the hole. The ball suddenly came out, fast, spiraling and hitting me dead in the stomach. I fell to my knees in shock and pain. I wasn't expecting it to come out that hard. That's when I realized that it all depended on the strength of my throw. If I throw it weakly, the hole would toss it back with the same momentum. Throw it hard, and it comes back hard. I played catch with the black hole for a good hour, and then made my way home. Oh, I couldn't wait to show Reese. The next day arrived. It was a Sunday, so after Reese got back from church, I was ready to show my friend the coolest thing ever. When my friend got back home, I quickly ran over to his house and asked his parents if he could hang out. They said, of course, and we went to the treehouse. Dude, I have something amazing to show you, I said, hyped for my friend to see my cool find. Yeah, yeah, sure you do, he responded. We walked about three quarters of the way and started to approach where I'd seen the black hole. That's when Reese spotted it. Whoa! What the hell is that thing? Uh, it's a portal, I eagerly said. We looked at it for a minute, and then approached closer. Hey, throw this into it, I said, unable to hold back the excitement in my voice. I handed him the football, and he brought his arm back and threw it in on his first try. I was a little envious, but I had to remember that Reese played baseball, so his aim was going to be better than mine. Now what? he asked. Just wait. A minute went by, even though it felt like an eternity, and the ball finally popped back out and landed on the ground in front of Reese. Reese didn't say anything for a moment, and then knelt and picked up the football. He scrutinized it carefully, looking for any scruffs or nicks on the ball. That was pretty amazing, he said in a monotone. I smiled, grabbed the ball back from him, and threw it into the hole once again. We played for a good thirty minutes. At first, Reese wanted to know how many things could go through the hole. He threw rocks, acorns, and even a worm into the hole. All came out just like they had before. Then we took turns tossing the football into it. What's on the other side? Reese finally asked. I don't know. Space stuff? What if there's a whole nother dimension on the other side of it? Maybe there's an alternate version of us. I tossed the football into the portal again, and waited for its re-emergence. 
yeah, I guess it's possible. Aren't you at all curious what's on the other side? I thought for a moment. Yeah, I guess I'm a little curious. Well? Well what? I asked, confused. Stick your head through the portal. What? No way, I said, backing up as if to say no with my body. Oh, come on, don't be a chicken like you were the other night. There it was. The chicken comment. I knew it was coming. I don't care what you say. I'm not doing it, I said, not letting peer pressure get the best of me. Every time he pressured me into doing something, we always ended up in trouble. And that's when he began to cluck, bending his arms into his torso to resemble chicken wings. Chicken, 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 he chanted. Look, I'm not doing it. You don't know what could be on the other side. What if there's a monster or something? Come on, man, it's just a portal. Don't you want to know who's been tossing the ball back through it? I didn't think about that aspect of it. I guess there could have been someone on the other side, catching the ball, then tossing it back to us. But I still didn't budge in my decision. Ah, pussy, he finally shouted, which hit hard. He'd never called me a pussy before. I didn't even know that the word was in his vocabulary. I knew the word too, but I'd never dare say it. He began walking toward the portal, and I shouted to him, What are you doing, Reese? I'm going to look through the portal. I quickly followed him, trying to explain that this was a bad idea, but he wasn't having any of it. Oh, look, you can't be a chicken your whole life. you got to take chances sometimes. Plus, I want to know who or what has been on the receiving end of our passes. Don't you? I guess, but I don't think it's safe just to poke your head into things you don't understand. Ah, <sighs> pussy, he said, then bent forward to stick his head into the hole. He hesitated at first, maybe to take in what he was about to do, and then plunge his head into the hole. A few long seconds passed by, and nothing happened. He just stood there, arms limp at his sides, looking through the hole. I looked around nervously, like we were doing a bad deed and I was on watch. And then, everything happened at once. Reese fell backwards, hitting the ground hard. I stood right behind him and was hit by something warm and wet, as if someone sprayed me with a super soaker with hot water. I looked down at the ground. He was missing his head. His neck leaked copious amounts of blood all over the place, and that's when I realized that I was covered in blood. I screamed a scream only a kid could make. And then something flew out of the portal, and I instinctively caught it as it slammed into my chest. I looked down at the thing in my hands and screamed again. It was Reese's head. His face was twisted in horror, like he'd just seen a ghost. His tongue lolled to the side, and his eyes were glazed over, a white, milky film covering his barely visible pupils. Memories started flooding into my head. Thoughts of the times Reese and I would play hooky from school. The times we'd sneak out and would tell scary stories to each other in the treehouse, trying to make the other piss his pants. All the fond memories I've ever had of Reese came together all at once, and were shattered with one new horrifying mental scar. My hands began to tremble. Then I dropped Reese's head to the dirt and ran away. I kept running until I made it home. I opened the door and slammed it behind me, then ran to the restroom to wipe Reese's blood from my face. I spent a half hour scrubbing Reese's blood from my face, and another scrubbing the blood off my clothes. I was petrified. I walked out of the restroom and ran up the stairs to my bedroom. I got into bed, even though it was only six o'clock, 
and lied there, mortified. My eyes were wide open, looking straight at the ceiling, staring into space. The image of Reese's body dropping to the ground, and his head landing in my arms kept playing over and over in my head. Then, after hyperventilating for a good ten minutes, I fell asleep. My dad woke me up. I opened my eyes and thought to myself, God, that was one weird ass dream. But my father knocked me out of that thought when he asked me if I knew where Reese was. Apparently he hadn't come home and his parents thought that maybe he was over here. They filed a missing persons report the next day, thinking maybe that Reese had run away. After a few days went by, the police decided to do a search of the woods. They spread out, and they found his decapitated body on the woodland floor. Local news played the story everywhere. They were looking for his killer, and asking if anybody had any information that they should call the local police department. I picked up the phone a few times, mostly to clear my conscience, which was eating me alive. But I didn't because, well, I knew no one would believe me. Who would? Hey, my friend stuck his head through a portal and it bit his head off. Yeah, I'm sure that would be taken seriously. After all this time, one question remains with me though. What did my friend see on the other side of that portal? Tinnitus, a nightmare of a disease affecting millions of people, myself included. How could I best describe this condition? Oh, an incessant nail on a chalkboard screeching that goes on for every minute of every day. Just imagine never experiencing the true bliss of utter silence. Maybe it's not too uncommon to hear a vague ringing, especially for people like me growing up to be an obnoxious teenager with no regard for volume control. Understandably, my parents were not happy about me blasting loud music at all hours. But what kind of teenage rebel would I have been if I listened to my parents? Ultimately, my punishment would be given years later, when I started hearing a faint ringing. At first it was a rare occurrence. But, at present, I can't even fall asleep without the aid of a loud white noise producing machine. But even then, my quality of rest is debatable at best. During the early days, I was willing to try any ailment to stop the godforsaken noise. Rainstorms while sleeping, earwax removal, and even a small dose of antidepressants. Nothing worked. You'd be amazed how many help groups you can find online. Forums for anything. Veterans with PTSD. How to cope with losing a pet. Or, as in my case, how to deal with tinnitus. I'd looked over the top suggestions on several occasions. Most I'd already tried while visiting my doctor, while the rest were mostly scams more suited for multi-level marketing campaigns. I used to call myself an optimist, so naturally, I'd return to the forum every other week in hope of finding a miracle cure. On one particular day, I decided to scroll a bit further down and see the less popular suggestions. Among the obvious troll posts and scam cures, I found a more clickbaity post that read, A weird trick to cure tinnitus. Nothing more, nothing less. I sighed and started reading. Preparing myself to be disappointed yet again, but the instructions were simple enough. 1. Place your palms on your ears and direct your fingers to the back of your head. 2. Put the index fingers on top of the middle fingers and try to snap them like a drum. 3. Repeat 50 to 100 times. There were no comments below as the post was relatively new. Worst case, I would look stupid sitting there by myself and drumming the back of my head. And so, 
I tried it out. Snap my fingers, causing a little drumming sensation. 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. Eh, that ought to do it. I removed my palms from my ears and listened intently. Nothing. For the first time in years, there was just the pure bliss of silence. For minutes, I just sat back in awe, not believing what I was hearing, or more accurately, not hearing. Had this trick actually worked? I decided that, rather than enjoying my newfound silence, I would give my brain a well-earned, silent rest. And that's exactly what I did. I slept like a baby that night, until around two in the early morning, or night, depending on your perspective. I tend to wake up randomly during the night, so it caused little concern. To my disappointment, but not my surprise, the screeching had returned. I half expected the solution to be a temporary one at best. I simply performed the witchcraft-like trick, and the ringing was gone, without a trace. With a sigh of relief, I settled back into bed. The sound that had haunted me for so long had been easily defeated by a helpful anonymous person online, and I was content. I only then realized that I wasn't enveloped in complete silence. There was something else cowering in the dark, only letting its presence known by a soft thump. Could it be my own heartbeat? After all these years, would I be haunted by a new sound? I held three fingers on my neck and felt a pulse. It didn't match the sound in the darkness. Although I tried, placing the sound proved to be a challenge. With each passing thump, I tried to localize it a bit more. I went as far as opening every cupboard in my apartment, checked in the hallways and, lastly, placed my ear against the wall. No sooner did my ear hit the wall before the sound stopped. My heart raced alongside my logical mind. There had to be a simple explanation. Maybe it could have been a busted pipe, or one of my neighbors being a prick so late at night. No matter the cause, it was time for bed. In the morning, the ringing returned. I figured I could put the noise at bay by performing the trick every six hours. It quickly became a routine of mine to stupidly tap my head when no one was looking. And oh, it worked. Everything was great, apart from my nightly routine of waking up around two and hearing the same thumping, softly keeping me company in the darkness. Most nights I simply ignored it. But other nights, curiosity got the better of me, and I pursued the sound. Each night was another failure to locate the sound. I couldn't place it, and I couldn't bother keeping myself up long enough to figure out when it started and when it ended. I talked to my neighbors, but... They said they weren't up at such late hours. Rats were another option, but after a quick visit by pest control, they assured me there were no rats living within the walls. In fact, after looking at the building plans, they insisted it would be impossible for rats to live inside these walls. So, as a last resort, I decided I would record myself sleeping. I'd heard there were a bunch of apps that only record you if there's a noise, so... I figured it would be ideal for the situation. I downloaded a free app and went to bed. Just like every other night, I woke up around two, but decided I would ignore the sound and let my phone do its work. I had some earplugs that came in handy, and without further troubles, I fell asleep. After waking up the following morning, I brewed myself a much-needed cup of joe and sat down. Figuring I could put the recording into an editing software to look up the amplitude of the sound waves, rather than, well, listening through it all. Thumps started around midnight, and kept going for several hours. Other than that, I mostly found sounds of myself shifting around in bed. However, at about 3.30am, there was a short pause, consisting of complete silence, as if every sound had been erased from existence. It was not more than a minute before the sound returned, but 
It wasn't a soft thumping anymore. It sounded more like whispering. Just incomprehensible voices talking to no one in particular. Raspy and tired. I couldn't make out what was being said on the recording. My phone wasn't exactly a technological wonder. In fact, I had no interest in finding out. If anything, I would have preferred to leave the apartment and forget about the whole thing. But being a poor student without any nearby family, I had no other option than to stay put. I still thought there might be a logical explanation. After some hesitation, I came to the ridiculous conclusion that if I could hear the actual whispering, I could probably locate the culprit. And so, when night came, I went to bed, fully expecting to be awoken at the usual time, and from then I would search for the noise. 2am rolled around and I was awoken by the familiar but eerie thumping. It had turned from an intriguing part of my nightly routine to a dreaded enemy. It was relentless, not stopping for a single second. And as before, I had trouble locating the exact place. Somehow, it managed to echo through the room like an auditory illusion. At precisely 3.31... The sound abruptly stopped. I held my breath in anticipation, waiting for whatever voice to start talking. The whispers began, and unlike the thumps, I could immediately tell its origin. It came from the wall directly behind my bed. I knew there couldn't possibly be anything existing behind that wall. No apartment, nor crawl space, just a concrete barrier separating my room from the outside. I crawled onto my bed with very cautious steps, as if approaching a wild animal, carefully putting my ear against the wall. The whispers started to become more focused, turning into a single, understandable phrase. We know you can finally hear us. It sounded like several broken voices morphed into a singular entity. I jolted back on my bed, where I remained frozen in fear. Thank you for letting us in. The voices continued before falling silent. My head started to feel faint. It took me a while to realize I hadn't been breathing for quite some time. I forced a gasp, bringing air into my lungs, trying desperately to calm down. While trying to come up with a plan, the thumping returned, only this time I heard exactly where it came from. The soft steps turned into loud, tearing along the inside of the wall. It moved with each step, working its way towards the hallway outside my bedroom. I could vaguely make out a shadow beneath the door as it moved past. I always keep my bedroom door locked, a habit brought with me from living with intruding family members, but I knew that wouldn't stop whatever abomination I had let loose, simply by acknowledging its presence. Creatures started knocking on the door, a playful thump with each knock, one I'd become accustomed to over the past few weeks. It spoke to me with a broken voice. It's too late to lock us out now, they said. What the fuck do you want? What are you? I stuttered back. We are the Acolytes. We just wanted to be heard. We've waited so long. I punched the door, small cracks appearing around the hinges. We have always been here. Why are you afraid? Another violent punch, and the upper hinge broke off the door frame. I would have called the police, or anyone for that matter, but I had inconveniently left my phone in my jacket pocket. So I put on whatever clothes I had lying on the floor and climbed out the window using the fire escape. I wouldn't take my chances with that thing. As I climbed down, I heard the door break open. Where are you? We have come for you, the things yelled. I didn't look back. After escaping, 
I found a nearby gas station and used their phone to dial the police. Without going into the specifics, I told them there was an intruder in my apartment and explained I'd fled down the fire escape. Of course, when they checked the apartment, there was no one to be found. The door to my bedroom was shattered, but I couldn't prove it was a new development in my otherwise messy abode. They had to break down the front door to get in, and I knew my landlord would be pissed, but I didn't care about that. After a very brief investigation, checking the security camera to confirm that no one could possibly have entered my apartment, I was let off with a warning not to prank call the police again with my imaginary problems. Another cop offered a number for a facility that deals with psychiatric issues. While the police were there, I grabbed a bag and filled it with the bare essentials. I left that night to return home to my parents. <laughs> Just figured I would spend the rest of the night at the train station. I'm never returning to that place. I've called my landlord and explained that they can keep my deposit, along with whatever stuff I'd left behind. A few days have passed since I left, and my tinnitus has returned louder than ever. But... I'm happy about it. By allowing myself to hear the creature, I inadvertently let it in. So I saw it is a bittersweet blessing to let the tinnitus hide the thing that goes thump in the night. The only problem is, the ringing isn't enough to silence the voice. Last night, I woke up to a strange sound at 3.31am. We found you. Well, I hope you enjoyed those two tales. Not exactly connected to one another, but I really like both of them. And they were both a little bit short to be in a standalone video. So I thought, well, why not put them together in one? So, feedback, ideas, comments in the section below the video. And I'll do my best as ever to reply and to get involved with the chat as much as I can. Well, still feeling a little bit under the weather, but getting better. So should be back to normal by the end of this week. But the videos will keep coming as ever. So... Join me again on Wednesday, won't you? I know you will. Until then, sweet dreams and bye-bye. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook. Come chat with me on Twitter, listen to the background music, and download it if you like on SoundCloud. Drop by the store, pick up a t-shirt, and, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, send it to Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, looking forward to seeing you all again real soon, so come check me out, okay? <laughs>